Constitution. It's called God's Ten Commandments, a standard no one passed, yet most people say they're good. So the ninth said you shouldn't lie, you admitted to that. The eighth one said you shouldn't steal, don't take anything that's not yours. Have you ever done that? No. I don't know if I can believe you, you just told me you lied. Hurt your conscience, God is your judge. A paper clip, a pen, a candy bar, download MP3 file. You've never taken anything that wasn't yours. Maybe it's hurt to you. Tell me something. This you can talk right here, we can hear you. Right, this one time I was so strong in the camera. This one time I was like, it is the stolen candy bar. Love. I broke down on the. Like, I am blind, so you're trying to get the candy bar back in there. I apologize for the letter. I don't steal. All right, I'll we'll give you that. Well, well, we'll give you that one. The third command says you're not to swear. Not to use God's name as a swear word called blasphemy. Oh my God, no. You already said OMG, JC, GD, cursing. You've never done that, huh? No. Really? No. Ah, all right. God, the seventh no. commandment says you're not to commit adultery. But before you answer, Jesus said, if you just look at another person and lust after them, you've already committed adultery with them in your heart. Have you ever looked at another person with lust? Sexual desires. Have you ever looked at somebody else with lust, sexual desire? Is that a yes? Is it a yes? All right. So what, what, what's your first name? Brennan. Brennan, I'm Tom. Pleased to meet you. But I'm sorry, in your own admission, you're a liar and you're also someone who looks for lust. But Jesus said the same as adultery. There's two of the commandments are broken. There's six more to go. So if you were uh, facing a holy God right now, some drunk jumps the curb and he kills us, and here you're right standing in front of God, how do you think he would find you based on those commandments? you think you'd be innocent or guilty? What do you think? That all depends on if God's real. It all depends on if God is real. Well, let's just assume he is. If an if make thing, you know, whatever the if thousand, it might be. Oh, yeah, if you would be guilty. If you were guilty, then how would he have to find you? You're guilty. Where would he have to send you? Heaven or hell? What do you think? Hell. hell. Does that concern you? Not really. Considering Does it concern you? Do you have any idea what hell is like? Uh, non-existent. Not is what? Non-existent. No, we, no, we just said what if. Right now, one in a thousand, like playing the lottery. If it was correct. Him, even if they don't believe it. And just because you don't believe something doesn't mean it's true. Do you understand that? And just because you do believe it doesn't make it true either. Really? But we have more than just belief to prove it. We have well, actual evidence. Know, that's the we have the actual evidence. There's evidence. If I get, well, you see, but you won't even let me tell you where. If we give you the evidence, would you believe it? See, that's the problem. Those of you who cast that out. Hardcore evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, we do. But see, you, you see, you're raised saying I don't, and say you do, you don't want to even hear it. It's okay, but I can tell you, this happens to some people. Don't you? Yeah, because it, you better send them. That's the 1900th time. You look good, by the way. I like the haircut. Oh, yeah, I had to clean up a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you, man. God bless you. You got that man? The giant money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm right here. Yeah, there, all right. I, I want to give it away, but I got to You can give it away. We got some more. Okay, okay. Hang around with us. Thanks. I'm going to need to be able to speak to so, well, you think about it for a second. If you broke, well, it's very simple. Even in your logic, if you broke man's law, one thing, you commit a murder, now you're standing in front of a judge. What is he going to say to you? Oh, the court system doesn't exist. We don't punish criminals. Do whatever you want. And that's what you're saying. You say, see, because you got rid of God, then you can do whatever you want. You can lie still, you can fornicate, you can do whatever you want, and you don't care. The court system is made up by people to have a little crutch to think about whatever they're done. Jesus was proud! It is a crutch. It's horrible. That crutch is going to cripple you. You need more than a crutch. Yeah. That's the whole problem. Look, you have to hit the stand. If you've broken God's law, you violated his law, he has no other choice but to punish people who do that. But God did something. That's what he preaches. What? He's not. Where did you say that? Literally everywhere. Why are you swearing? We have people here. I don't want you to be swearing. We got ladies present. Don't be swearing. Watch your mouth. That's the whole point. I hear that. Really? Yeah. One I, verse. One verse? Yeah, give me one. You okay. read it from front to back, so give me one verse. It's been years, but... I don't it's know. been ten years? He said it's been years. But I grew up in a Christian home. Like, I grew up... Oh, you grew up Christian? I grew up Christian. Well, that might be the problem. There you go. She knew one. All right. How's that? That's pretty good. How about John 3.16? I know that. 
Yeah, he didn't know that, but he's ready for the cover to cover. I like how they do that. How about John 3.16? That's a very famous one. Yeah, and he gave his only begotten son. Why? Wait a minute. Why? Why would he? Yeah. Yeah, so why? Can, why would he have to do that? Why would God have to suffer and die on the cross okay, when you don't even believe in him? You just, you just said, if you believe in him, you forgive him. So it doesn't say if you believe in him. It doesn't say that in the Bible. Jesus said, it doesn't say that. Jesus never said, ask for forgiveness. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will perish. What's the difference between repenting and asking for forgiveness? Ah, good question. You want the answer? It's in 2 Corinthians 7.10 in the Bible that you went from cover to cover. It says, godly sorrow produces a repentance that leads to salvation. So the sorrow that we've committed against the holy God is what he's talking about and that's what leads to repentance not just saying asking for forgiveness you get it a little difference isn't it so wait if I got down on my knees right now and just like screamed out just like you would give it away you could be next if I did that I'd be all good I could go and kill all of these people and I could get down on my knees and be like hey Jesus take me back I'm sorry might be I didn't mean to do all that well, would, good. would that be true or would that be a lie? If I actually was See, the way like, you said it's a lie. You were not yeah. doing it. You were saying, look what I can get away with. And that's the problem. That's what most people try to do. I could they get say, away. I got Jesus, but they live the life that they want to live. See, he knows our hearts. He knows they're a phony. He even says they're going to come to me and say, Lord, Lord, look what we did for you. He says, be gone. I do not know you. You're a worker of iniquity. You don't just get in because you say, Jesus, forgive me. That's the whole point. That's not godly sorrow and that. There's no repentance. Repentance has to do with turning away from. You do a 180. So whatever you've done before would cause you to go to hell. But once you okay, repent of your sin and you turn from them, Jesus said, it's for God. The slate is wiped clean. That person is no longer under God's wrath because he has to what? See, the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, his blood, cleans that person. And now that man doesn't go and live the same lifestyle anymore. It's called being born again. You might, because you were raised a Christian. You might have heard that. You might have heard that. I, I did believe in God for like the longest time, up until about, I don't know, three years ago when I came out to my parents and told them I like guys, told them I was gay, and the first thing my dad said to me is, I love you, even though you're going to hell and no one will ever love you, no guys will ever love you, no girls will ever love you, I still love you, even though, like, I'm a philosopher. So see, the problem is that you didn't believe God. I believed God. Believe it, because God said that man and a man is an abomination. My bad. I'm it's sorry an abomination. Sorry. So if someone truly loved God and He is your Lord and Savior, you would be obedient to your Lord. And I can't you change the way I think. It's the same thing as lying, as stealing, look, see, as having sex out of marriage. No difference. It's called sin. I've done all of those. Except I know you have. I already admitted to them. Yeah. Yes, sir. But there's also what is there? the prostitute that was by the stone. And Jesus said that the person or anybody that hasn't sinned is the nice stone. Cast the first stone. Right. And nobody did. Right. What does that mean? Every single one of us have sin. And he didn't care whether they were sleeping with a man with a man or a woman and a woman. It was still sin, right? Yeah, they, yeah. They, okay. Now, what did he say to the woman when they didn't throw the stone at her? So they all left. They said they just dropped their stones and they all left. Now what happened next? She looked around. There was nobody there. He says, look, they don't condemn you. Neither do I. Then he says, now go and sin no more. So how can you keep having sex with another man if you're a man and claim you believe in Jesus? You understand? We're on the same, we're on the same page, right? So you understand it. That's why we give the law. Because once people recognize the law holds them guilty, it's like putting a mirror up. Not one of us is good. That's when the repentance comes in. You have to recognize that. Now, then you would esteem the death on the cross. So it made sense why he died. He paid the fine for the crime that you committed. And now, once that happened, you turn away from it. Hold on. Now, the reason you get the glow stick is you're the one who deserves it. You know why? It's called grace. See, in the Bible, it says, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, by grace you've been saved. It's a gift from God, not of works, so that no man can boast. So even though you didn't prove you were a good person, you failed the test, we still offer you the glow stick because it's by grace you get it. Does that make